Well, it's time for the journey to begin, and we're here so early at the airport to begin this journey that the magic at Disney Store isn't even open yet. It's going to be a long day. A flight to Atlanta, and then uh, a very long flight to Haneda in Tokyo, Japan. at the International Terminal in Atlanta. Made it with just enough time to spare. We left a little late. Uh, there's our plane. So this is where I'm going to be staying. We, uh, One of our Japanese employees rented an apartment for me here in Japan. We're just it's like a 25-minute walk from Tokyo Disney. Um, and I plan on doing like a whole like I walk through the front door and I'll show you around. It's pouring rain. So my luggage is like soaked. They had to carry it up the steps and stuff. So this isn't exactly what I dreamt the arrival would be. But nonetheless, there's the entry area. There's laundry, right? The wash. Uh, cabinets. We have a sink. Stove top. Microwave, rice cooker. Coffee pot. Good sized fridge. Then if we come in here, we have my bed. Um, I'm on the wide angle lens. It, it's... Trust me, the bed is longer than I am. It's not that small. Uh, they were nice enough. Um, some of our reporters, Hiroki and the gang, uh, were nice enough to set some stuff up here. I have a nice little mat at the bed. It's very cute with Mickey and friend. Mickey and Minnie are on there. Um, there is a desk here and a chair and a TV and all my ta I see towels and they got me a hair dryer as if I have hair to dry. Uh, I got to make my bed. Uh, and there's a pretty decent sized closet, actually. It's pretty deep. And it kind of sunk it in. And there's a shelf up here, actually. Oh, and then it goes, yeah, it's, there's a bunch of space hiding in there, too. And then uh, there's actually a whole lot of room above. There's a skylight, a big vaulted ceiling. And then there's this ladder here, which we can get on. Watch me go through it. I might move the bed up there. I think that this is kind of like a dream. Like you, something I've seen in the movie. I know people be like, oh, I call it dorm had lofts. Um, I've never lived anywhere with a loft. It's kind of, it, it's a, it's a neat little thing for me. And there's a, I have a balcony as well. Let me climb down the ladder. There's a balcony here. Not your normal room tour for us, right? raining. I threw my jacket up there for now because it's very wet. I'll show you guys out here one day when it's when it's more dry outside. But yeah, that's the only other thing I want to point out is this thing because I'm sorry. Is this on purpose? This looks like the original Game Boy. That's got to be on purpose, right? Because it just looks exactly... It's, it's One of the things I always say about Japan is all, you know, everything's very modern, but... The interfaces for everything look like 80s, you know, video games or 80s consoles. It's always a thing, right? Because this kind of matches, the remote matches the aesthetic too. But yeah, this is my cozy little Japanese home while I'm, while I'm here in Japan. So I did post the short room tour to my Instagram as well. And a lot of people kept asking about the bathroom. And I was waiting to film the bathroom till after I used it. So here is the bathroom reveal. I guess I should switch to the white. Let's switch to the white angle. Okay. This will make it look bigger than it actually is. I like the rest of the apartment. The bathroom is very Japanese and, and very tight. Uh, this is the shower. That's it. 
so the shower's fine. I have I have two to three inches above my head before sealing, which is fine. Water pressure, phenomenal. It's great. Um, see my weird... I don't know who's using a cleaning stick of that size in this bathroom. You would just punch the walls, but that's there. Um, yeah. Uh, so here's the problem with the toilet. Now, number one, there's the weird sink when you flush. This is a thing. So when you flush... It refills, but it also becomes a sink, which I'm sure is hygienic, but I'm, I'm not using it. I'm going to use the sink behind me, and I, and I have for washing hands, brushing teeth, all those sorts of things. I'm not, I'm not using this thing. So I'll yell over the running water now. Um, the problem here is I'm over six feet tall, and there's not a lot of room between the toilet and that wall. Um, I have gone back and forth on sharing this information or not, but I, I think this is, you know, I got to remember the book, Everybody Poops, right? Um, so in using the toilet, you know, number one is fine. Number two, my legs don't really make it in. I have a size 15 foot, size 15 shoe. Thank you. Size 15 shoe and very long legs, and they just don't make it. I'm if I was like three inches shorter, I think I'd, I'd make, um, I know I'm a larger guy. This isn't a weight thing. This is a height thing. Cause it's about getting your legs in this space. There's plenty of room for torso. Legs, legs is the problem. <laughs> legs are the problem, I should say. Um, so I may or may not have to sit sideways on this thing with the door open to, to do business. I'm not saying I am. I'm not saying I'm not. That's for the viewer to decide, all, all one of you that are watching this at this point. But other than that, I like, I like my apartment. All right, so you guys saw the apartment tour. I've now been here um, not even 48 hours yet, uh, but um, I've taken the time to, you know, first day I got in at like two o'clock. Um, by the time I got the Uber and everything, um, I was here at four o'clock. Um, there was an interesting mix up when I arrived in that uh, I had been given pictures of what this place looked like on the outside, and so I expected a very certain color of building. And I showed up, and, and the Uber driver dropped me off, and I'm like, I'll figure it out. He offered to, like, take the bags of door. I'm like, I don't even know where the door is. It's, thank you. It's fine. Um, and so I walk around the corner, and the building's the right color, um, but it doesn't look like the building, so I'm very confused. Um, so then I decided to walk back the other way. I was like, the other building looks like the building, but it's black instead of beige. That's a big color change. If the whole building is black instead of beige. Um, so they painted at some point since the last photos um, were taken and the company renting the apartment is still using photos of it in that color. Also back then it had directional signage on the outside that told you like pointed to the apartments. Um, that wasn't there. Um, but luckily uh, Nana, our, our Tokyo reporter who set this all up, uh, did a nice job uh, giving me direction. So I knew where to go eventually. Um, I lugged my luggage up the steps, got in here, and then um, that's when I filmed the room tour. So that's the situation I'm living in right now. Uh, and uh, yeah, other than the bathroom, everything's been great. I learned how to do uh, weird Japanese laundry is what I'm calling it, um, which it really turns out isn't really that weird. Uh, but there's no dryer, and that's very common that there's not a dryer. So there's a washer, which will hold my giant American clothes probably um, probably about five or six articles of clothing and that's it for me <laughs> that, that fills it but that's okay because that's all that fix on that's all that fits on the crazy hanger thing um, which we use to hang stuff on the rod outside on the on the balcony um, so I learned to use that device uh, which it's not complicated I'm, I'm you know uh, building it up for comedic effect but um, it wasn't a complicated thing. It's really just, you, you figure out how to open it and then you, you know, use all the pins to hold the clothes. And even though it's been windy, that thing is, of course, like everything in this country, it's, it's magnificently designed. Despite being a cheap plastic device, it works beautifully. And even in high winds, the clothes would not come off of it. So high praise to that thing. Um, the one thing I will say is I'm not, uh, I haven't worn air dried clothes since I lived in the Bronx. So when we, when I lived in the Bronx, we didn't have room 
for a dryer. We had a washer, but we didn't have room for a dryer. So what my mother used to do is go down and do the laundry and she'd come up. And then we had a line, a clothesline in the backyard where we hung stuff up. And that was a huge pain and stuff flew off of that all the time. It wouldn't have if we had this thing. So in America, we need more of these. Maybe we do sell them in America. I have no idea. Because since then, I've had a dryer, and it is one of the greatest conveniences in, in modern times, I will tell you. I have a new appreciation for having a washer and a dryer available to you. Not that it's not a huge hassle. It's just, you know, you have to wait several hours for the clothes to dry out there. And I think there's a, the clothes feel different, you know, because they don't, especially it's, it's, it's winter here. Right, I'm technically spring, but it's it's cold. Um, so the clothes, you know, they're not getting heated. There's nothing like the warm clothes out of the dryer, right? So, um, but I I will I will carry on. Uh, we will continue. I will not return home so quickly. Um, for those of you that are going to ask about travel re related stuff, I flew on Delta uh, from Orlando to Haneda. That was not direct because there's no such thing. Um, Delta likes to route a lot, not that they always didn't, but more so even than previously um, through Atlanta, which is their hub. Um, and so there are direct flights to Japan um, out of the Atlanta hub. And so I took a 7 a.m. out of Orlando. Um, we ended up leaving a little late. I think they were waiting for traffic clearance in Atlanta. And then I had a 1030 flight out of Atlanta, which landed here at 2, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, roughly. Um, again, I, I had to deplane, go through customs, all of that, um, which is very quick in Japan. I will, I will tell you, please use the uh, Visit Japan website to pre-fill out stuff. So that way, once you show up, all you need is that QR code at customs. Otherwise, you have to fight with other people to find table space to fill out the forms. I, like an idiot, forgot that existed and did the forms this time, even though I've done the travel, uh, the Visit Japan stuff before. Um, I forgot in, in the midst of, you know, moving apartments and everything else work-related I had to do in the two or three weeks leading up to this. Uh, but yeah, it, it, even with that, it took me all of three minutes to fill out the form. I got in line. It was another five to ten minutes through there, got my bags, and then uh, they checked the bag real quick and I was out. Um, but by the time you turn and twist, by the time that was all done, it was uh, probably 2.45, almost 3 o'clock. <clears throat> called an uber um which you look there you could obviously take the train that where i'm living currently is kind of between train stations so from either train station it would have been 20 to 30 minutes walk which i have two large luggage it it, it was possible but it really wasn't also the weather was terrible it was raining real heavily and that it just wouldn't have worked so i did the uber which is like i even came up to somewhere near 100 bucks which is a nice chunk of money, but again, you will have options if you're coming as a tourist. Um, obviously, if you're staying on property at Tokyo Disney Resort, um, whether in the you know the, the official hotels like the Toy Story, the Miracosta, Ambassador, Disneyland, um, Celebration, any of those, you can take uh, the train. The train will get you there because um, it'll it'll take you to Myhama Station, so you can take the train. I've done it before. Nothing wrong with it. Um, yeah, so you, you do have that option. And also if you're staying at the, the essentially what are the good neighbor hotels, right? The, the Sheraton, um, the Hilton, um, um, Okora, is it Okora Bay? I wish I forget the names of the other ones. I've stayed at the other two. Um, any of those that are on the bay around the theme parks, um, you know, same thing where you could um, take the train to Mahama Station, get off, get on the monorail, which we'll show you a little bit about the monorail today. And uh, then... Uh, then get dropped off at your hotel or near your hotel. Um, and with a, but much more ease than my situation would have been, honestly. Uh, so I'm trying to think what else has happened in the time. I've just, I spent most of the 48 hours moving in. I went around to get sushi one time. Otherwise, there's some food in the apartment that Nana and, and friends stocked. Um, so I've had some stuff to eat, and other than that, I went and got sushi, but I haven't done a grocery shopping yet. That's probably the next big um, thing I'll do for my apartment living adventure, and uh, yeah, I have my big jug of water I've been drinking out of, like an animal, I'm just drinking out of the jug. 
I could pour it in a cup, but I'm the only one that lives here. What's the difference? Judge me in the comments. Go for it. I've never been judged on the internet before in all my years. So I actually have my first kind of reporter assignment today, if you will, um, which is uh, they've put up the Tokyo Disney Sea sign on the new entrance to the park from the Fantasy Springs Hotel. And it's visible from the monorail station, I, I believe Bayside Station, which is the station out by the Hilton and the Sheridan and, and the Toy Story Hotel. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna walk. It's about twenty-ish minutes walk to Tokyo Disney Resort from here. Um, otherwise, it's it's actually just as far to the train to then take that to the. It doesn't make any sense. Um, I think the the closest train station that's not the train station at Tokyo Disney is thirty minutes away, and so. I could walk to my Hama station, but that's also at the resort, so we'll be there. <laughs> There's no train to take at that point. We are going to take the monorail, though. Uh, so um, that's our first adventure today. I'm sure I will find time to stop and shop at one of my favorite places, which is in the sort of their downtown Disney. That's the Ixpiari uh, Shopping Center. They have Bon Voyage, which is a store shaped like giant luggage. And it's basically like their World of Disney store. And I can't wait to shop anymore. So um, let the fun begin. I'm not going to go to a park today. It's a, it's a little bit of a late start. What time is it? Well, after fighting my watch for a few minutes, I can finally see clearly that it's about 7.30 in the morning. So, um, I mean, I could buy a park ticket. And I, I have a lot of stuff to do here. So I gotta, I'm, I'm still charging a bunch of electronics. I'm kind of getting ready um, for a lot of park days in a row, but I have a, I have basically a couple days of free time here up front. Um, but I am going to go get pictures and video of this sign, something exciting to do, and I'll take you guys along for the for the ride. And as well, um, we get to see how bad the walk is. I mean, the walk it says it's 23 minutes. I walk pretty fast, as um, we learned when I did the half marathon last year. That it, it's uh, I've got a good stride because I'm tall and have long legs. And so uh, probably won't take 23 minutes, but we're going to time it and we're going to see uh, uh, how the walk goes. Coming up this pedestrian ramp. And we can actually see the castle from here. <laughs> Isn't that weird to see a castle with a highway, especially a Cinderella castle? Look at that. I almost missed it. Then you have uh, Prometheus even clearer right there. It's a pretty serene little walk. A lot of bicycles. For as much road traffic as they have. Plenty of people use the subway and bicycles to get around. And yet there's still congestion. Well, we got a sign for Tokyo Disney Resort, our first sign. I'm still getting used to the new phone with the five zoom. It's a little funky. But there it is. All right, as we crest this ramp, I see the Tokyo Disneyland Hotel in the distance. Distance, I can't even speak today. That's what happens if you don't talk to people for a couple of days. There it is, which means we're very close to Maihama Station. I love that every time I stop filming, I see the thing I'm talking about or the next thing to shoot. There's Maihama Station. So we're pretty much here. Station. 
So the Fantasy Springs Hotel is just outside Bayside Station, but faces into Disney Sea, and this has never been an entrance to the park. This is all the way on the opposite side of the main entrance. We're a little more than two months away from the grand opening today. We're focusing on the Disney Sea entrance side of the Fantasy Springs Hotel. So we assume this will be exclusive to resort guests, at least probably for the first several years. But that'll go straight into Disney Sea and sh straight into Fantasy Springs. You can see Disney Sea off in the distance from Bayside Station, but also right here. There are the mountains of Neverland and the volcanoes are smoking. listen in because it's going to be over in a handful of days. Also, Nautilus. So we're back at Xperi. Uh, they have a Disney store. Now this will have Merchandise not at the parks. Their Disney stores have their own merchandise, which also, most of which isn't at the U.S. Disney store. So we're going to see some weird, cool stuff for sure. There's one I need. It's just so big. But I love Nana. I don't know how I'm gonna bring that home. These are adorable though. Special when you sell them in other places, like a New York exclusive bag or a London bag. station is right here at the entrance to Xperi and also a monorail station uh, but then to this side you could walk if you want to Tokyo Disneyland it's not very far but you have to walk through the giant luggage 
uh, which also makes up the Bon Voyage store. But I'm not leaving without going to this store. So the entrances are in the giant clasps on the luggage. You see there's stamps for all different places around the resort. And then a giant hat box luggage at the end. We're in the last few days of the 40th. Here's the remaining 40th merchandise. Mickey's hat. There's a pillow, it's not a hat. And then they have the parade floats. These little statue toys. I talked about this on News Today. This is the Monsters, Inc. Ride and Go Seek flashlight tag set. So it works just like the ride. Where you shoot the flashlight at the light-up helmets. And they react. I might need this. Oh my god, I love this transportation stuff. There's a bus, the monorail. There are plates. Placemats. The, this, they had the kids play it before, but this is all new to me. Very cool. If only they were turned this way. They're not. They're, God, they have the best merchandise. So this is a figurine set. These are just the costumes in Harmony and Color Parade. And then, of course, they made the big figures of the floats. There's more of these coming out in the next week, actually. A couple more floats. And then there were miniatures of the floats too at one point. I think they're gone now. So the coolest thing about the store is you go in the luggage and then it's like you're in the luggage. So there's someone's camera. Um, there's a bunch of little pieces of luggage. There's other little things. There's a giant belt. Well, that might be a strap for the bag, but you get the idea. There's a new version of Choco Crunch. Cubic Choco Crunch. Whew, I worked up a sweat in that jacket. I mean, it's it's 50 degrees out. Um, so I was like, oh, I better wear my heavy jacket, but uh, I ended up being too warm in that jacket. I'm all sweaty now. Um, but back home, uh, I think we're gonna end the first video on lunch and snacks, I think. Um, I haven't, I had like sushi and I've had a lot of rice for 48 hours. So I finally went and spent a few minutes at the convenience store. Uh, number one thing I have to talk about. My friend Josh uh, brought me to Tokyo Disney for the first time uh, back in April, March, April of 2018 it was my first trip. Changed my life because as I've said a million times before, it feels like you come here and it's the Disney you remember from your childhood if you're of my age group or older. Um, it feels that way for sure. And I had, I had you know, this little, this little two hour, three hour jaunt there today was a nice reminder and got me in the mood. Um, for what is to come. So I'm on the monorail. And this is one of those moments where you you feel the, the Disney magic, the thing we talk about so much. And I know I get this rap as being incredibly negative, um, but I hope people understand that comes from a place of love. Like I love these places. I think they're so special. Um, and I think it's it, part of it's the memories, but part of it's the artistry. And I think those two things go hand in hand. I think it's the level of artistry is what makes the place special and that's what makes the memories we we make with our friends and family stick as much as they do and that's why we fall in love with this thing is what i believe so those those two things are important like yes this part can continue on even if the quality degrades but this part is still just as important um and i'm on the monorail and we're passing disney sea and in the back in the back corner out the other side where I, maybe one or two people on the monorail could possibly see, would be even looking that way. I happen to be looking out that way. But I'm looking at the monorail, I'm like, this is, she's in a weird back corner on the ground below the monorail. No one, like, maybe two or three people are gonna see her. And she, the second that monorail comes up, is waving with all her heart and soul up at the monorail, this cast member. And that, I, I teared up a little because that's, that's how much I care and that's when I see cast members care at that level and, and we're all in this together and we all love the guest experience. It's very special to me. Um, and that's what's special about here is I feel like there is never a pause in that guest experience. I feel like the, the customer service is so above and beyond and so courteous and so polite. And it, it reminds me again of, you know, the first time I came before that, there was a part of me that believed that, uh, 
like the, the feelings I had about Disney World when I was a kid were probably pure nostalgia, that a lot of that wasn't real, that it wasn't actually so clean you could eat off the ground, that maybe everyone didn't wave and smile every second of every day. Like maybe that was all just nostalgia in my mind, um, you know, playing tricks on memories. And it came here the first time and walked in and went, nope, uh, turns out that was real. Um, and especially at Tokyo Disneyland, it comes to light because the park looks like, in a lot of places, the Magic Kingdom of when I was a kid with the, a lot of the lands have the like single color pavement. I mean, some of it's still like that. Um, less so than originally, but but uh, there's still some spots in Magic Kingdom. But like Adventureland with just that big green, plain painted pavement. Um, and I see how clean it is and there's no one for so many feet uh, which is a rarity in that park, mind you. But that day, there's so much open space and it's spotless. Like, it's completely spotless. And then, you know, if you pass a food cart and no one's in line, those cast members are smiling and waving at everyone that goes by. And those little things make a big difference. But it also confirmed that, like, clearly in my lifetime, the Disney experience at their other parks has diminished. Like, it, it's clear. And I'm not saying, look... There are thousands of cast members who work in the other Disney parks around the world that care at that level. I'm not saying they don't, but it's not everybody, right? It's not It's not as apparent as it is here. Like, look, there are people make magic every day at Disney World, but, you know, it's, it's almost more special at Disney World when you find a cast member like that, someone that you see going above and beyond. And I tear up then too because it's it's so much rarer there as opposed to here where it's I still tear up but it's every every second practically um, the show is immaculate and that's what I love about Disney is, is that that's what makes it a magical otherworldly place is that there's nowhere else in the world that's like that and it still exists and lives here at Tokyo Disney anyway well I'll, I'll get more existential with you I'm sure as the weeks go on in this extended visit, but um, I'm going to talk about weird things for a minute. Uh, so, convenience store visit number one. I mean, I got sushi, but we won't count that one. It wasn't on camera. Uh, my friend Josh brought me the first time here in 2018, and he said, you have to try these. Um, first of all, the the art on the package is, is magnificent, right? I'm going to find this. Uh, it is a boy and a girl with giant peanuts and she's she's riding one of them he's gonna hit her in the head with one for some reason i don't know there are other varieties though and they get weirder this one's not that weird this is probably a strawberry jelly strawberry jam and margarine um, but again these children are very small and they have a giant jam jar and they're they're having a time i've never had this one this one's new to me but so these are kind of like uncrustables but they're different in that the peanut butter inside is like peanut butter fluff. So it's if you mixed, you know, marshmallow fluff and peanut butter together, and they're so light and airy and they're delicious, and I love them. I'm gonna enjoy one of those later. I got one for another time. And then I gotta try this strawberry one. I've never had strawberry. Uh, fun, fun, quick anecdote. One time we came and there was a new special flavor. It was coffee. So it was, I think they were riding a coffee pot. I don't know, I don't remember. But it was the grossest thing I've ever eaten. It was just black inside and it just tasted like coffee. It's a coffee sandwich. Oh, I love this country so much. I just love how weird and wet. I love the, the dichotomy in Japan is the functionality against the wackiness, right? There's so much built in to just help move the work day along life is about that work day um but then when it's time to have fun they have fun and it's weird stuff like this um for the morning i have my my black coffee i didn't get boss i gotta get the boss tomorrow but i like this one the ucc black is good too um, i also love the iced green tea is also enjoyable this is my favorite thing to get for walking around the park they sell a different one um, that's actually a special bottle. It's like a Tokyo Disney bottle if you get it at the park. Um, but it's good for, I don't really, I don't, I don't like just water. Um, I don't know. Um, so the ice green tea hits the spot. This is the perfect thing for walking around the park. Like I've said before, um, Diet Coke not really around. And I don't want to drink a lot of regular Coke for the calories. So uh, not that Diet Coke's super healthy for you, but uh, nonetheless, 
uh, ice cream tea for me to enjoy tonight, probably. Uh, then, finally, I haven't had soda in 48 hours, which is like, might be a record for me in my life, uh, in my adult life, I would say. Um, yes, I'm that unhealthy. But uh, there's no Diet Coke in this country. So uh, I have a Coke Zero. And then I bought something to microwave and heat up and eat quick. Um, I got pork cutlet bento box. It has some noodles and some rice and some pork cutlets. And I'm going to microwave it up and have my lunch. Uh, but then I have something, well, it's supposed to be for after lunch, but maybe we can just do it now because I'm not going to turn the camera back on after I eat. Let's just do this now. See, I did some Tokyo Disney Resort shopping. Mind you, bags are an additional charge. I forget how many yen they are, 10 or 20. It's almost nothing. I have a receipt. The bags are, yeah, 20 yen, which maybe it's probably less than 10 cents. American. They're a great souvenir, though, so I, I do advise you to get some. They're very, very cute. They do sell a weird little reusable version, too, if you rather have that to take home. So I bought I bought this. We'll play with this tomorrow. I want to eat. I need to eat some um, meat at this point. Uh, we'll play with this tomorrow. Maybe after I show you guys the ride, then we'll play with this. It'll make more sense. But uh, we're going to go down this rabbit hole. This video is not long enough today. We're going to go down the Choco Crunch rabbit hole. This is Cubic Choco Crunch. If you've watched the channel for any amount of time and watched some of our stuff other than news today, you've probably heard me mention Choco Crunch. It's a long-standing tradition here. So in Japanese culture, when you go places, it's normal to bring people back a food gift. Um, and so there are whole stores at Tokyo Disney that are dedicated to these food gifts, whether it's box chocolate, crackers, cookies, snacks of all sorts of, and kinds. And we're gonna try, you know, every every other video or so, I'm gonna bring one on and try it. My goal is to have tried everything in that store. Still after 10 trips, I haven't tried all these weird prepackaged snacks. Uh, but my personal favorite prepackaged snack that I've had so far is Choco Crunch, which they, the locals, love too. Um, so it's been a long tradition. My first trip, they actually did something special with Choco Crunch. It had its own store uh, in World Bazaar, their Main Street. And it was the Duck Family Chocolate Competition. So Donald's always been associated with Choco Crunch, which is why typically they're egg-shaped. I don't have the egg-shaped ones right now. Um, but that's Donald's connection to Choco Crunch. So it became that the entire Duck family was having a competition for who could make the best flavor of Choco Crunch. Uh, and so as the months went on, they introduced special tins, and different characters came in, including Gus Goose, who eventually won the whole thing, which was, you know, nonsense, but we won't get into that now. He rigged the ballot, please. <laughs> anyway, hanging chads, all those things. The Choco Crunch, it's just boxed, like, almost like Nestle Crunch, but in other countries, they put less junk in their chocolate, right? So it's, it's the chocolate taste is so different. Um, and I think so much better anyway. And this includes when you go to Europe and other places. But so Choco Crunch, and they do all different flavors. There's milk chocolate, there's dark chocolate. But then for that event, they did all sorts of crazy flavors. Um, I can't remember what they were. But Choco Crunch, even after the 35th ended and that moved on, remains a thing. Um, and they keep introducing new flavors and new types. This is a weird new type. So this cousin, so usually I buy them in collectible tins, the egg shaped ones. And you know me, I like to collect things. So I have a lot of the tins at home. Um, in fact, when we packed up my apartment, I think there were two, two big bins of just Choco Crunch tins. Um, but this is new, this is cubic. The only difference should be that it's cube shaped. I'm eating this before my lunch. I'm gonna yell that by my mother when she watches this. I'm gonna peel the tape is not to ruin this box. I wanna keep this box. The nice thing is they didn't put tape that will peel the box because everything in the product here is so thoughtful. And they know like, oh, you're gonna give this to someone as a gift. We don't want the tape to, we want it to stay closed, but we don't want it to be ruined if they want to keep this very cute box. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Pull it out, it's angry Donald with Chip and Dale. They're driving him crazy, but he also got cute, you got cute Donalds. Look at the packaging. We're gonna cheat and have one of these before lunch. Cubic Choco Crunch. 
So the only difference should be that it's a cube. I don't know if it's gonna taste different because of that or not. That's a big chunk. You know? It does give it a little bit of a different taste. The, the bite is different too. Because of the egg shape, it has like this dome. It takes a good good hard bite to get into them. This one's real easy to bite because of the shape. Such a rich chocolate flavor. I love it. I think these are dark chocolate. Unless I'm an idiot. I might be. These are good though. I'm going to rate it out of seven because that's what we do now. Uh, this is Choco Crunch. I love Choco Crunch. This is a seven. They're delicious, great packaging. I love them. Cubic's where it's at. That being said, I will still buy the regular because I need the tins. And the tins are wonderful. But this is a new... If I want just the... And this is one variety, so it's only going to be that dark chocolate. Um, but again, sometimes the tins will have two or three flavors, maybe even more. So, yeah. But that's, uh, that's it. That's been my first 48 hours in Japan. I think the only way to end this now is to open the housewarming gift that... Nana and Hiroki and Maki uh, picked up for me, which was this little Pokeball, and see who's in here. I'm hoping for Pikachu, because I literally don't know who the other ones on here are. And I've played the newer games, just the newer names do not stick with me at all. I still play. I have up to, like, the most current version. I mean, I didn't play for a little in the middle. So between, like, gold and silver up to... I couldn't even tell you when... All right, I've wrapped the package. How do you, for Pokeball, you should just hit the button and it opens, but that's not how this one's gonna work. Oh, it's one I don't know. Also candy? I think there's a piece of candy in here too. I don't know who this is. Let me know in the comments if you know who this is. I have no idea. After my time, even though I still play the games just very old can't remember things well thank you everybody hopefully you enjoyed this i know it's uh, i don't really vlog this has never been a thing we've done food reviews in this style but we never did anything else like this so give me notes let me know what you like what you don't like about it um it's going to be a learning experience for me so i don't expect this to be the best product i put out um i also only use the iphone today i have a bunch of other equipment with me i'm learning to use um some new new stuff I'm going to try out tomorrow. We'll see how that goes. Because uh, I think I'm going to buy a park ticket for more. I guess if they're available. But I think um, before things get crazy and all these events start up, I want a day in the park that's kind of a little more laid back and get back into the swing of things and maybe enjoy a couple of my favorite attractions before I, you know, get caught up in all this content and, and work stuff. So, uh, well, thank you for watching. Arigato gozaimasu. <laughs> and...